Well, guys, what's happening in the bicycle industry? We seem to have these new bikes coming out and they seem to be engineeringly flawed. And we also have the opposite thing happening to the price. We have prices increasing. And I'd probably say that prices over the last five years have increased 30 to 40%. You used to be able to get a top bike for around about 10 to 13,000. And now we're up around about 20 to 21, 22,000 if you're looking at the top end. The medium ones probably around about 17. And then you can obviously get your, your ones five years ago, which were around about 10 to 12. So the prices have jumped up considerably. And that's AUD I'm talking about. If you're talking about US, you're probably talking more about 15 to 17 and we're probably with more six to eight. So the prices have increased, in some cases, closing up to 50% on what we saw five to six years ago, which is significant. But on the flip side of that, we aren't getting the quality of engineering in these bikes. So one of the latest bikes that's come out is the Trek Madone. Now, actually, officially hasn't been released, and Trek and the team are not saying that the actual bike does exist. So what we've got here is, is we've just got a probably a prototype that's in the final stages of being fine-tuned and released onto the market. And we have this thing where there's like a hole in the back of the bike. Now, if you really look at this, this is a major step away from traditional engineering design. Now, if we look at traditional engineering design, we have a two triangle setup. And why a, a two triangle setup for a bike frame is really ideal is because any point that you put pressure on that frame, it's actually going to put one of those members into tension. The triangular shape is very, very good structural member. And if you actually look at beams that were built and they're lightweight, they'll have a triangular section to them. And that's because of the way it's designed. It transfers the forces back to the, the points of where it's being held up and is in compression. So it's a very, very good design. And it allows you to make the item as lightweight as possible, but with the maximum strength. But of course, the engineers in the bike industry have had a little bit of a different thought with this Trek Madone and they put this hole into the back of the frame where you're putting the most load, which is your body, onto that frame. Now, I don't know what the engineers are thinking they're trying to do here because aerodynamically, you're gonna get no advantage when you have so much items in front of that point to turbulate the air. And even if you're going for comfort, this is a really dramatic design because you have a number of, of parts on the composite that are in shear and compression, when really what you want with a composite is to put it in tension. Products that work in tension, usually you can make them lightweight, like a piece of string or a spoke on a bicycle. They're extremely lightweight because the loading or the part of that, that item that's taking the load is in tension. And because items work much better in tension generally, concrete doesn't, but a lot of items that you can make lightweight do, then that is advantageous when you're trying to keep the weight down with something like a push bike. Now the other problem that we've had over recent years is manufacturers using composites like as if they're a very good component in compression. Now we've had the designs where we've had these new concealed cables into the headset and what some of the brands have done is made a stop on the composite so the handlebar doesn't go too far and then shears or cuts or severs the cables that are going transitioning from the, the down tube into the frame. So they put this stop there. Now, instead of adding something that can spread the force, like a piece of aluminium or maybe even a piece of rubber that's bonded there, they just let it hit the carbon. And composites are not very good in point pressures. It's like if you have a fiberglass boat. Now, a fiberglass boat, you can take it out in very rough oceans and you can, it can take extreme impact and force. But if you hit the side of the fiberglass boat with a hammer, 
it's going to crack and damage the fiberglass. And this is the same with a, a carbon fiber bike. It's, it's almost exactly the same construction, except of using fiberglass, they're using carbon because carbon is a lighter material than fiberglass. So if you're putting a point pressure on from the handlebar being hit and moved, it's going to damage the fibers and the composites. And they've also done this with seat posts. We've seen a number of designs with the seat posts where the fixing device puts significant force on just one small part of the composites. Whilst in the past, we've had collars that we've used that clamp completely around the seat post. And then what they do is, is they apply that force across a bigger surface. So it holds that, that seat post from all areas. It's not being applied like just one kind of foot or, or wedge that's pushing on one point where the carbon fiber can fail, especially when you have flexing and you have heavier riders. So in conclusion, I'm not too sure what the engineers are thinking or they've just run out of ideas and they're just trying to make a piece of art out of these bikes and they're just trying to come up with something that looks different so they can sell a new product that like, hey, is different to what the last guy's got when he rocks up to the cafe. I don't know, maybe that is, and maybe that does sell pikes, but it is not a engineering solution that is, <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for, is a, a known way of transferring forces to be able to make the bike as light as possible and and, and also as strong as possible for the weight that they're making. And the other thing that we do know is the frame manufacturers are also trying to make the frames as light as possible because the group sets are getting heavier. So to keep the bikes down to the UTI weight, they're making the frames lighter. And we've seen that they're using the EPS technology and I've discussed that before. So they can then make the, the walls, the, the, the carbon fiber walls of the frame thinner but because they're getting much, much better compaction, they don't have to have a percentage allowance for any voids or whatever. So they don't have to have that, that quality control variance that they would normally have. They can make the bike almost to the 100% design factor because they're getting maximum compaction when they put it into the frames. But the engineering design of some of these new bikes that's come out is just, it, it just makes you scratch your head. I, I, I don't know. And we're paying huge amounts of money for these bikes, insane amounts of money. It's just, it's just ludicrous. So I don't know where the bike's going. And there has been some rumors come out of some other YouTubers that these big companies are not actually designing these bikes in house. What they're doing is, is they're buying designs off young engineers out of China because it's cheap and then they're kind of botching these together to make a frame. They go, oh, that design looks good, that design looks good. We might add that to our frame and put it with this other design and we've got something coming out. And maybe these designs are more pretty rather than functional, I don't know, but it's really kind of crazy what's coming out on the market at the moment. Yeah, we have concealed cables. Yeah, we have a hole under the seat post, which kind of is a bit dumb when it comes to fitting things like lights and radars and all that sort of thing. Where the hell are you going to fit them? I don't know. But uh, maybe we're going to have a special adapter brought out by Trek that's going to fit in that hole somewhere so you stick the radar right in the middle of the hole. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, guys, leave your comments down below. What do you think of a lot of these designs that are coming out? And they've been shown to not be well made because we've had failures. And it, this has been recognized by a number of people. Even the manufacturers have had recalls on them. So I don't know where the bike industry is going. Maybe someone can shine some light on it. Maybe I just cannot see what's going on with these engineers. Anyway, guys, that's where I'm gonna leave it. And don't be a ninja what, remember to subscribe down below. And also, if you could really do us a favor and like the video, because what happens is with YouTube, the more people that watch, the more people that like, the more people that comment, it pushes the algorithm out so more people can see the content and that'd be really appreciated okay guys that's where i'm going to leave it and i'll see you next vid